Hello everyone, it's Marina. I'm here to do a share with you. Um, I was it was requested that I go ahead and give some advice and tips on stuff that I've learned from making these journals. And um, I wanted to do a separate video for that. I didn't want to ramble on in a video where I'm doing a flip through. So um, I guess um, let's see where do I start here. All right. So the fabric that I used for all of these covers is upholstery for the for the base I used, okay, so for the base I used canvas and I sewed onto the canvas which made it easier for me. You guys don't have to do it that way. I used a genome sewing machine. Um, it's really small and it's lightweight and I can just move it around while I'm crafting which is what I do. I'll, I'll sew and then I will move it to the side just like that and I will craft. So, I will have a video of a, proce a process video of how I made uh, of how I made this journal right here. So there are, I'll have a process video of that and so you guys can check that out. Uh that'll be linked below. And like I said, I use my ba my base that I use is canvas. So, uh it makes things a lot easier for me and I use a thick sewing needle. You don't want a thin sewing needle because you're going to be going through lots of fabric and sewing on paper and stuff like that and plus when I use this sewing machine I don't feel bad about using paper because I feel like uh, it can it can uh, it can handle it so um, I've used a lot of vintage stuff if you're going to use um, I've I don't know how to how, how do I say it like don't feel like it has to be perfect because you're not going to get it perfect for when you're making these journals you're the goal is to be creative. It's a textile art. It's not like I don't go in here. I don't go in with a plan. Like um, for me, some people I know, some people have to have plans, or they overthink it, or they think that there's like a special way to do it. There's not. I really just go in, literally put fabric on. I pick a fabric that I like and I stick it on there, and then I literally just sew it on. That's all there is to it. Um, I've had a couple of ladies tell me that it's impossible to do and that it's it's hard. Uh, I make it look easy, but it's not, it's not doable. I don't, that makes me feel bad because it is doable and you can do it if you have a sewing machine or if you want to sew by hand. I didn't have a sewing machine before and I have sewn things by hand. So you can, you can make whatever you want to make. I know it seems intimidating, but if you just, if you want to start with paper, just sew a line on some paper. It looks awesome. Like, I have something over here somewhere. But if you, I can't find it right now, but if you want to just, like, try that, start off with something simple. Sew a line on some paper. Um, I, my sewing lines aren't always straight. I'm not a pro. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. Um, I just kind of make it up as I go and go with inspiration. That's what I go off if I go off of inspiration. So, it's really easy and you can do it. Like, you can just get some fabric you like, get some upholstery, get an old an old shirt that's falling apart that you really liked and start sewing it onto another shirt like it can be frayed and just pr just try it it's fun that is my personal advice for um, ladies that are feeling discouraged it's not hard I know it looks like all extravagant and oh my gosh she's a pro I have no clue what I'm doing I've never sewn in my life except for on books and that's only been in the last I would say the last nine months that I started doing that type of sewing. So, uh, there's something I wanted to go through. What was I going to say about that? There's some, a subject that I wanted to talk about. Okay, um, I use parchment paper in my um, journals, and when I wanted to tell you about the large paper that I used in this journal. So, the large paper that I used in this journal is the HP. It's HP multi-purpose ultra white paper that I found on Amazon and it's really awesome but if you're going to coffee dye it you need to use parchment paper to separate your sheets otherwise they will stick together if you bake them in the oven and that is just something that I've learned you can air dry them and that'll be easier but these papers are huge like they're really big pieces of paper and the 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 weight of the paper whatever however they make it, it makes it stick together more than normal paper does. So I use the parchment paper and then once my parchment paper gets nice and coffee dyed, I turn it into, uh, I put it in my books. And so that is like one of 
these pages here. One of these pages. And they sound awesome. They look awesome. It looks good in, in journals. Um, when you separate the pages, they look good. Um, if you don't separate them, you'll get tearing like up here. But I mean, some journals it looks good, and I like it on certain. I like that effect on certain things, but I don't want that on everything. Um, so just look out for that if you decide to use the larger paper. Another tip is to when you're using parchment paper, your pen will not stick to parchment paper. So keep that in mind. You will have to use pencil on parchment paper. I haven't figured any other thing to work on parchment paper. I do like, I love how it sounds, and I like to use them in journals. But um, if you just don't want to use that page at all, don't worry about it. But if you do, like, you really want to write on that page, and you're like, I love the way this sounds. I want to write on it. Why isn't it sticking? Um, you have to use pencil. That's the only thing that I found that works on parchment paper. And don't write anything like really important because it might just smear off. Because parchment paper that I use is used for baking, and um, you know it's a non-stick, so <laughs> it really is non-stick. Um, let's see here. I have some coffee dye trim that I used. I coffee dye some of my trim. You can leave some of it as is. You don't have to coffee dye it. Um, use little bits of stuff. All of this right here, like this trim right here, is just one little piece that I had left. Like I have all these little piles of scraps over here of just stuff that I have left like just extra stuff that I'm gonna use and and put in a journal and I don't throw that stuff away I save it and I just like this right here like what would I do with this this is something I would fold in half and paper clip onto or not paper clip but either sew it onto a page like that or I would staple it but that's like some ideas for that. Um, for this right here, this is some old ribbon that I had. And it is vintage ribbon. It's so pretty. But right here is what I want to talk about. Um, did that come off? No. Right here, I, I sewed this on and then I sewed on some buttons. Oh, that did come off. Okay. I'm going to have to sew that back on. But here's an earring. This was an earring of mine. I lost the other one on the way home, and I have no idea what happened, so I never got to wear it, and now it's on here. So use old stuff that you have. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can use ribbons, like this one I found at the thrift store. I found at Dollar Tree. Not Dollar Tree. I found at Goodwill. And I didn't want these on the sides for what I was doing, so I just cut it. I cut these off. I cut these off and then I, that way it's all soft and that's how I made that part. So say you have some really pretty ribbon and you're like, I can't use that because it's it's made for this. Don't think like that. Think, oh, I love the way this looks. Like, hold on, I'm going to get one. this one right here. This is really pretty. And I'm so, uh, sometimes I get frustrated because I'm thinking, I can't use this. This is ribbon. I'm supposed to use this for this. I That's not true. So on here, I want, I'm want i going to use this on something else. And I'm going to cut these edges off right here. I can do some fraying if I want to, which fraying looks awesome when you're making a bohemian junk journal or a junk journal in general. Fraying looks great. Um, sometimes you'll have like really pretty ribbon, like this one right here, and you don't have to cut anything off at all. That's super awesome. You don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I haven't gotten any other specific questions. They just asked me to give some advice on the journals. When you're sewing them, when you're sewing them together, I always put the top on first. I put so I'll have my base, like I said, I'll have my base, which is the the canvas, and then I will sew my main piece on there that I want for the cover, like this one. I just sewed this on, um, and then I'll start adding stuff. I don't sew the back on until I'm finished, like the inside. When I say the back, I mean the inside. I don't sew that on until I'm all done, and I will just layer stuff just layer stuff on that you think looks pretty. This one right here, I kind of went with the covers, uh, the colors that I, nav I navigated with the, using the colors that were already on this cover. So that's with the blue trim, the cream 
lace, uh, crochet lace, the gold, the red and the blue, like I just, I went with the colors that were on this fabric. With something like, with something like this, and it doesn't have a bunch of colors, it's just like bronze and purple, I kind of go around, like for this one I did, and I, I started to think of colors that would look good with this, and this looks super good with it. Now, if I, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't do something like, even though that probably would, that does look pretty, like if you're not sure, try, just put it on there and look at it. Do I like that? Yeah, that might look good. If I did something with that, that might look good. Or... Do I like... No, that might go, too. Who knows? Like, you just layer stuff on and see what you like. Like, look at it before you put it on there. Like, you'll know if it doesn't go. For certain things, like, this would go... I think this would go really pretty. Like, I'm kind of bummed I didn't put that on there now. This is going, like, really pretty with a lot of stuff. And you'll see stuff afterwards that you're like, I should have done this, I should have done that. That doesn't mean your work isn't good. It means it means you got a better idea what you're going to do next time. Um, when you're putting stuff in your journal, when you're looking for stuff to put in here, I use a lot of book pages because, well, they're kind of cool. And um, I've this ones are ones that I've altered, altered book pages. And you can make pockets out of them, you can make, you can just leave them as book pages and use them that way, um, you can turn them into envelopes, and I like this upholstery because you can use both sides, um, the upholstery that's for outside, that's for outdoors, is water resistant, so this is water resistant, I want you guys to see that this is supposed to be water resistant and, because it's outdoor upholstery, which is beautiful, but then you have this upholstery, which I don't know how water resistant it is, but um, it's so pretty. It's really pretty, and a lot of the times it's reversible. I've noticed that with this fabric, I can flip it over and use the other side. And that is just for, I don't know if it's the drapery that is like that or what, but I do notice that the out outdoor fabric is, or the outdoor upholstery is not like that. It has a very it's white on the other side because, you know, you're not supposed to flip it over, but so I'm trying to think here, did I cover basically what I wanted to talk to you about? Did I cover everything? I guess I, I would more be easier for me to answer questions for you guys if you had, like, ask questions. Ask me questions and I will keep, I'll, I'll make a list of them if you have, if you need to, if I'm, and I will go over my answers that way because it is easier that way. But I will have, I will have most of these listed in my shop except for this large one. This one's going to a friend. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this button back on. And I hope I answered some basic questions for you guys as far as crafting these. I know I did not even cover half of all of the questions that most of you have. But just a little something to keep in mind if you're feeling like you can't craft or if you're not sure um, how to do certain things. But those are my tips as far as the stuff that I use. And a lot of it's gifted to me. A lot of it's stuff that I found in the thrift shop. Or, um, yeah, just have fun, basically. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Alright, um, I will see you guys next time. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> Bye.